Magic Ballerina Rosa and the Golden Bird Written by Darcy Bustle Prologue In the soft, pale light, the girl stood with her head bent and her hands held lightly in front of her. There was a moment's silence and then the first notes of the music began. For as long as the girl could remember music had seemed to tell her of another world a magical, exciting world that lay far, far away. She always felt if she could just close her eyes and lose herself, then she would get there. Maybe this time. As the music swirled inside her, she swept her arms above her head, rose onto her toes and began to dance. 1. At the theater. Rosa Maitland sat in the darkened theater, her eyes fixed on the stage as Cinderella and Prince Charming danced together. Cinderella spun round, moving lightly across the stage. The prince leaped into the air before sweeping her into an embrace. Rosa glanced at her mother sitting beside her in her wheelchair. There was a wistful look on her mum's face and Rosa wondered if she was remembering when she had once been a ballerina and danced in theaters around the world, before she'd had the accident which had ended her dancing. Career Isn't this brilliant? whispered Olivia, Rosa's best friend, from the seat the other side. Rosa nodded. It was the best birthday treat ever. Her mom had got the three of them tickets to see the Petrovsky Ballet Company. Rosa watched as the prince spun Cinderella round for a final time and then Cinderella curtsied and everyone in the audience broke into a storm of applause. One day that will be me. Rosa thought, clapping as hard as she could. She loved dancing and went to classes three times a week at Madame Zazo's ballet school. Her mom helped her practice between classes too. And Rosa didn't just dance in class and at home. She had a secret. She had a pair of red ballet shoes that were magic and whisked her away to the land of Enchantia, a place where all the characters from the ballets lived. Rosa had had an amazing adventure there recently and she really hoped she would go back again soon. As the curtain fell for the last time, lights came up in the auditorium and one of the theater staff came to help Rosa's mom get her wheelchair out. All around them people started to stand up. That was amazing, Olivia said as they all went out into the foyer. Thank you so much for bringing me. Rosa's mother smiled. It's a pleasure, Olivia. They're a wonderful dance company. Their choreographer is Mikhail Gorbachevsky. I danced with him many years ago. Really? Olivia's eyes were wide. Wow. I'll show you both some pictures when we get home, said Mrs. Maitland. But first let's find a taxi. Just as they reached the door of the theater, Rosa heard someone call her mum's name in a Russian accent. Eleanor. Eleanor Maitland. Her mom looked round. A tall, slim man with dark hair and a gray jacket was coming towards them through the crowds. Rosa's mother gasped. Mikhail. The man took her hands and kissed her on both cheeks. How wonderful to see you, Eleanor. And you. Rosa's mother smiled. Girls, this is Mikhail who I was just telling you about. She turned back to the man. Mikhail, this is my daughter, Rosa, and her friend, Olivia. Your daughter. Mikhail's eyes swept over Rosa. She looks like you, Eleanor. He smiled at both the girls. Do you enjoy the ballet? Oh, yes! Rosa exclaimed. It was brilliant! Olivia just nodded, seemingly lost for words at meeting such a famous ballet star. I want to be a ballerina one day, Rosa told him. Mikhail smiled at her. Then I hope you are as talented as your mother. Maybe you will dance for me one day. He looked at Mrs. Maitland. I would love to stay and catch up, Eleanor, but I have a meeting. Maybe you would like to bring the girls back to see the Firebird, the other ballet the company is performing? I can get you tickets. 
He pulled a wallet out of his jacket pocket and took out a card with his name and telephone number on it. Let me know when you would like to come, and I will make sure I am free to meet up afterwards. Rosa caught her breath. Now they would get to come to the ballet again. She turned to her mom in excitement. Oh, wow. Blod wouldn't that be. It's very kind of you, Mikhail, her mom interrupted, but I'm not sure we can manage it. Mikhail looked surprised. Just then a taxi drew close. Rosa, could you get that taxi, please? Mrs. Maitland said swiftly. Wondering why her mom was being so strange, Rosa ran to ask the taxi driver to wait as her mom wheeled herself over. Here, let me help you, offered Mikhail as the taxi driver came round to let down a ramp to get the wheelchair into the back. I'll be fine, thank you, Rosa's mother said abruptly. Mikhail's hands dropped from the chair. The taxi driver shut the door and Mikhail came to the open window. Goodbye, girls. Hopefully I will see you again at the Firebird. He looked at Rosa's mother. Please come, Eleanor. Mrs. Maitland smiled stiffly and the taxi drove off. Oh, Mom. Can we go? Please. Rosa said eagerly. We'll talk about it later. I'm tired. Mrs. Maitland put a hand to her forehead. Rosa sat back in her seat. I'll talk to her tonight, she decided. She's got to say we can go. She's just got to. Two. Enchantia again. But why can't we? Rosa demanded later that evening. Olivia had gone home and Rosa and her mom were talking about the ballet again. Mikhail said we could have free tickets. You wouldn't have to pay. It's not about the money, Rosa, Mrs. Maitland said briefly, busying herself in the kitchen with the washing up. So what is it about? Rosa frowned as her mom picked up a tea towel and started to dry the dishes. She sighed. It's complicated, sweetheart. I haven't kept in touch with any of my dancing friends because I don't want them pitying me for not being able to dance when I don't pity myself. You see, I think of all the good things that have happened since the accident like having you. But they wouldn't see it like that and I don't want free tickets because they feel sorry for me. Rosa thought about the man they had met at the theater. But Mikhail didn't seem to be offering you tickets because he felt sorry for you. He just said he wanted a chance to meet up. That may be what he said, Rosa's mother said, but I think he felt differently. She sighed. Look, it's late. Go and get ready for bed. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Rosa couldn't believe her mom was going to turn the offer of tickets down because of this. But mom, what if Mikhail was just being nice and did just want to see you, she said in frustration. Bed, Rosa, her mom said. Rosa knew that when her mom spoke that firmly there was no point arguing and so she turned and left the room. As she reached the door she glanced back. Her mom was staring at Mikhail's card, turning it over in her hand. That night in bed, Rosa opened her stories from the ballet book and turned to the chapter on the Firebird. The ballet was about a princess who had been imprisoned by a magician. Whenever anyone tried to rescue her, the magician turned them to stone. But then one day a prince came along with a magical feather from a firebird which he used to rescue the princess and turn the stone statues back into people. Rosa shut her eyes, imagining what it would be like to watch someone dance the part of the firebird. She drifted off to sleep, dreaming of fantastic birds and stone statues. When she woke up a little while later, it was dark and there was a faint tinkling sound as if someone was playing a piano very softly. Where was it coming from? She sat up in bed and gasped. The red ballet shoes at the bottom of her bed were sparkling. Rosa leaped up. This must mean she was going to Enchantia again. She pulled on the shoes excitedly. 
Who would she meet this time? What would she do? As she tied the last ribbon, colors started to whirl around her. She felt herself spinning round and round, lifting into the air. After a few moments later she landed back on the ground. The sparkles cleared and the music stopped. Rosa was standing in a wood. She could see the royal palace through the trees. There were butterflies flying around, rabbits hopping about and squirrels running up tree trunks. She spun round in excitement and then stopped. Something wasn't quite right. She looked around. What was it? Suddenly she realized that there were no birds singing. The woods were silent. That's weird, she thought. She looked at the palace in the distance. The last time she'd come to Enchantia she'd met Nutmeg, a helpful fairy. Maybe she should go to the palace and see if Nutmeg was there with the king and queen. Rosa set off. After she had been walking for about five minutes she heard the sound of voices carrying through the still air. They were raised and angry. Through the trees, she saw a small group of people. One of them was a slim fairy in a pale pink and brown tutu. Nutmeg! Rosa's heart leaped at the sight of her friend. She began to run, but as she got closer, she saw that the group were arguing with a large fairy wearing a black dress and a long cloak. Her gray hair was in a bun and she had a hooked nose and warts. She looked very scary. Rosa stopped at the edge of the clearing. Please let the firebird go, one of the men in the group was pleading with her. No, snapped the fairy. But you can't just keep him in a cage. It's mean and the birds in the forest need to be able to sing again, said Nutmeg. You have to release him. The fairy glared at her. Have to. No one tells me I have to do anything. I will do exactly as I please. No you won't, cried Nutmeg. She stepped forward towards the fairy. We'll stop you. Oh you will, will you? Well, 